Hello, I'm Dr. David Hornbrook, the Clinical Director of Education and Technology here at Keating Dental Arts in Irvine, California. I want to talk today about implants, what I call chairside implant tips. You know, Keating, we do a lot of implant restorations, not only abutments, custom and standardized, but also the restorations. And as I walk around the floor here in the laboratory, I see a lot of very common mistakes and errors that clinicians are making. And we're going to talk about how we can avoid those. As we talk about these, some of you are going to say, oh, I do that all the time. And, and we should, and a lot of you do, but I see it enough that I think we need to pay attention to some of these tips. The first one is take a PA or bite wing of the transfer post before you take your final impressions. I mean, I see this all the time and we have to send it back and say, take it again, which is frustrating for us as a laboratory, but it's certainly frustrating for you as a clinician and your patient. So when we put our transfer post in, if it's a hex, make sure it's seated all the way. If it's a lobe type transfer post, make sure it's seated all the way. Take a radiograph. If you're concerned, maybe you've never seen that implant before, or it's one where there's a transfer in the diameter of the base, send it up to Steve at KeatingDentalArts.com. He's unbelievable. He's our implant manager. You email it to him, Steve at KeatingDentalArts.com. He'll look at it. He'll call you right back. He'll email you and say, yep, see it all the way, or not. Also, only hand tighten your transfer post. Don't use a torque driver for the transfer post. The screw isn't designed to be torqued hard. The metal of transfer post can, can distort a little bit if you tighten it too much. So just hand tighten it. Now, when you do hand it tighten with your driver, remember there is a screw hole on the top, whether it be a hex or whether it be a star type driver. Plug that screw hole before you take your impression. I like to use a little ortho wax, or you can use a little impression material, you can use a temporary material. You could use a cotton pellet or a piece of one, I'd rather not use that. But what happens if you don't plug your screw hole and the impression material goes in there and then you take out your impression, unscrew your transfer post, sometimes that won't seat all the way because of that little remnant of the impression material that went into that screw hole. One of the things that Steve does here, he gets under a scope at 20 power, he'll have to take a surgical blade and actually take that away. But let's avoid it in the first place. Plug the screw hole. Second is, or fourth, let me just, I don't want to say second, let me do that again. Next is, make sure that you have enough impression material that surrounds the entire impression post. Because what happens is a lot of these transfer impression posts are long and if you don't completely cover them with the impression material they're not stable and we go to try to seat them and there's wobbly. And if that happens, yeah, I don't like that at all. Um, oh, you will be able to cut that out, let me just say. <clears throat> If you don't have impression material completely surrounding that post, and remember they're long, as we go in to insert that into the impression, we don't get stability and we can move it around within that impression, then there's a chance that we put the analog on that that won't be accurately transferred to the stone model. Next is, don't use a triple tray. I know a lot of you do and it's fine for single units, but not implants. We need as much material and rigidity in the impression as possible. We're inserting that long transfer post into the impression. It needs to be completely stable, and we put the analog on it. It needs to be transferred and reproduced in the stone model. So don't take a triple tray. Use a full arch tray, make sure the sides are high enough and long enough that we get a very rigid impression. Next, I would recommend send the surgeon's letter on what type of implant they used, or maybe you placed the implant. 
make a little photocopy of the little box the implant came in, send that along with your prescription. It just makes everything so much more seamless as we can see the overall goal of the case, exactly what was used. Next is don't reuse the analog. They're not really that expensive. You know, the transfer post, we can reuse, but not the analogs. What can happen is if you try to take it out of the stone model, and we've even had doctors in the prescription say, remove the analog from the stone model and send it back with the case. As we take it out of the stone model, we can actually distort that or we can bend it a little bit inadvertently and then you won't, for your next case, you won't get ap accurate representation of where that analog should actually go. So hopefully these little tips, there's not a lot and again they seem so obvious, but pay attention to these and what you'll find from Keating is you'll get implant abutments and their corresponding crowns back that look great, that fit, that meet all the criteria that you would expect from an implant supported restoration. I hope you enjoyed this tip. Again, it may seem obvious, but you know, our goal at Keating is to make sure every restoration, especially implant supported restorations that you receive back from us meets your criteria as well as your patients. Be sure to visit us at dentalup, all one word, dot XYZ for other clinical videos, podcasts, and product reviews.